This is a weird video. Tell you right up front. I just uh, I want to show how the poolology system, why it works, not necessarily how it works, but this is why it works. I've got a circle right here, just a circle of balls. And I've got this little makeshift line going here. It's straight in, center, center cue ball through the center of the 10 ball, aimed straight at the one ball, at the center of the one ball. So imagine there's a straight line right here. And this line that's coming off of the 10 ball and going toward the 15, I messed it up. That means that that's a 30 degree angle. So if I forget this line, if I actually aim the cue ball straight through the center for a half ball hit on this side, the 10 ball is going to follow that arrow and hit the 15 ball. Now is where the system, how it describes how the system works. So let me move this out of the way if I can. Now, here's the neat thing about it. So this line from the 10 to the 1 and then the 30 degree angle from the 10 to the 15 is called an inscribed angle. It's an inscribed angle. It's inscribed within this circle. There are three points on the circle. The 10, the 1, and the 15. So this angle will always be 30 degrees Anytime I point any of these object balls at that one ball, it's going, the other line is going to point it to 15. doesn't matter which ball I choose. It's an inscribed angle theorem. It's the math. So if I use, say, the uh, 13, there it is. From this point to that point to the 15, the 15 and the 1 are the stationary points. Those are the ones I'm not going to move. So if I shoot, if I, if I line this angle up with any of these balls and the one ball, the 30 degrees is always going to point to that 15. I don't care which ball I use. I come over here to the 7, line the 7 up to the 1. This line leads to the 15. I'll have to come over here so I can see it. Right, so I'm off. Right there. That's the inscribed angle within the circle. So how does this apply to the, to the poolology system? I'll show you. I'm not referencing a ball right here. I'm not referencing a ball over here. But the system utilizes, it was designed using circles like this and an inscribed angle. So what if I move this complete circle closer to the pocket? So now what I'm gonna have will be more like this here. Say I just took the complete circle, moved it over here like this, move this ball out of the way, these balls out of the way, this ball out of the way, move it all over here like this. Just like that. We'll call it right there. So now, what does this circle represent? It's the center of the pocket. So now, anytime, anytime I have, anytime I'm looking at, say, the two ball lined up with this 14 ball, like this, it's a 30 degree angle to the center of the pocket. So if the cue ball, if the cue ball were over here in a straight line with these balls, then all I have to do is aim for a 30 degree angle, which is a half ball shot. So the same thing applies if this, if the cue ball were in this line over here, and I want to create this 30 degree angle to send the seven ball into this pocket, then I'm gonna aim for the half ball hit. You don't have to know this stuff. That's what the numbers in the system, that's what the numbers do, except what happens is you're not aiming at a ball over here. If you look through that ball, there's a diamond right there. And the difference between here 
and here is only about an inch or so, which isn't going to be enough to miss this ball. So I'll move it even further over. What it ends up looking like is, let's see if I can shift to the corner pocket. It's a little easier to understand down here. So let's imagine the circle is right here, right? This is on the circle. This diamond is on the circle. The center of the pocket is on the circle. So my circle is right here like this. Any ball that is out here, we'll use it like this. Any ball that is out here on this circle, I'm gonna to try to make the best, This the little circle rock I have isn't large enough to make them this far out, but imagine if I've got a circle out here like this, and it, it goes on around like this, that's the circle. This diamond is on it and that diamond is on it. We'll call this whole circle a 20. We'll give this circle a value. We'll call it 20. This is the 20 circle. We'll call this 10. Anytime I have a ball on this 20 and the cue ball and object ball line is aligned up to this point, which is also on the circle, like that, and like, like that right there, and it's here. Anytime it's on that line, which I'm not really on it because I'm on the wrong side of the ball, it's pretty close. So anytime I'm on this, get the camera on this side of the table. So, so now we're like this. From the cue ball, straight through the center of the 11 ball, line straight to that first diamond. And remember, I've got a circle here. There's a whole circle right here. This is on the circle. This is on the circle. That's on the circle. This is really close, and this is really close. These little dots in here are just, the circle comes right through here. So anytime I'm on this line, I create a 30 degree angle right there, which means it requires a half ball hit to make this ball right there. Any of these balls pointed at this diamond or that diamond, I could come over here and move this line over here like this, and there's my 30 degree line pointing to the pocket. And here's my straight line center to center leading to this so there is an inscribed angle right here in this circle doesn't matter if i come over here to this three ball and move it set it straight in line to this just like that and all i'm doing this is the inscribed angle because here's the circle all i'm doing is putting the cue ball putting the cue ball on this line because this is the ball that i'm going to end up using to send this ball down that line. But there's my 30 degree angle, right to the pocket, because the pocket is part of the circle. But this was too complicated to put on a pool table. You can't imagine circular patterns all over the pool table. If you could, this would be 20. So what I had to end up doing was calling that 20 this line and this line. It's easier to stand over here and look at an object ball right here and imagine that it's on this straight line. Call that a 20. It's a lot easier to imagine that than to try to imagine a circle that comes out here and goes a little bit beyond this line out in here somewhere and then back here like this. It's, it still works because if I take this same angle and I line this 11 ball up to this diamond, there's a 30 degree angle leads right here to this side of the pocket, in the pocket. If I come over here to the two ball and I line it up to this diamond, I'm leading to center pocket. Same way with the seven. If I line this angle up to this diamond, the seven goes straight down the rail and catches right there on this facing, goes right into the pocket. These balls work exactly the same way. Even this diamond would work. The 10 ball aligned to that diamond puts a 30 degree angle right into the pocket. 
And all this is is showing the inscribed angle with the circle that the system was originally designed using. But I straight lined everything and that's what the whole book's about. It's, it's about recognizing the balls where they are on the table and then just simply looking through the cue ball at the object ball. Like I come over here, pan this thing back here. So we come over here and I can say straight in. I'm straight in from the tent, from the cue ball through the tent to this spot. This is on a 20, that's a 10. 10 is half of 20, so it's a half ball shot. I aim straight to the half ball aim point, which is at the edge of the ball, like that. That's how it works. It comes out here, I can do the same thing with this five ball. The five ball is on a 20. I'm lying straight for half of that. So it's a half ball aim. I'm gonna aim straight through the center of the cue ball to the edge of the five ball. That's how the system works. It's based on circular patterns. And I simplified it by making it straight lines. And the whole table is diagrammed in zones. So everything on over here is one zone and everything over here is a separate little zone going to that pocket. It had to be that way because the circular patterns they didn't linearize, linearize as well as I'd like to them have done. So um, I had to divide the table up like that. There would not be three zones if I could have drawn circles all over the table. But you'd have to be a robot to be able to imagine the circular patterns because they don't always come out where the diamonds are. So that's the way the system works. That's why the system works. And that's why it's a mathematical thing that works. But it's not designed to, for you to do it 100% of the time for the rest of your pool playing days. It's designed so when you get up and you see a shot, I have to put my glasses on. When you get up and you see the shot, like a ball setting up here, you get up here and you see this shot, and you see the cue balls right there, you've practiced the system enough, you automatically recognize where you need to aim to make that ball. At first you're gonna sit here and think, okay, this ball's on about a 32, and I'm lined a little bit more than a 15, so it's a tiny bit thinner than a half ball shot. You might think that way when you first start using the system, but after you use it for a few weeks, you're recognizing these things. You just get up and you see exactly where you need to shoot that ball and you shoot it. And that's just how it works. It trains your brain quicker to recognize the cue ball, object ball relationships. But it started with these little circular patterns all over the table and then graduated from there. So I thought I could share that. I don't know if you liked it or not.